class than we did on Monday. I'm hoping you know a little bit more about those today than you did on Wednesday even because you've worked a couple of homework problems. The theme for today is about treasury stock. I think we had a brief conversation about treasury stock in class last time. Refresh my memory. Yes or no? Yes. Did we talk about treasury stock? Yes. You know some of the characteristics about treasury stock, what it is. You had some transactions to accomplish in your homework for today. I'm hoping that you know it a little bit better. Now, there's some adjectives that we've not covered about shares of stock. And I would like to touch on these, have you help me understand these concepts better. Sometimes we refer to the number of shares of stock as outstanding shares, or issued shares, or authorized shares. Why I did the list in reverse order, I don't know. But you followed along, didn't you? Maybe it would help you understand their significance a bit better if we interpreted these terms with synonyms or short phrases or explanations. Sometimes in the context of shares of stock, but sometimes just in the way we use this vocabulary term in life. Let's talk about the number of shares authorized. How about the word authorized? <coughs> it's a synonym, and there are many acceptable <coughs> answers right this minute. Give me a synonym for authorized. Who's going first? Joel. Permitted. Permitted. Available. Oh, available. That's more like a lot of these. Oh. Shannon. <laughs> Allowed. Allowed. Approved. Joel. Given access. Given access. That sort of invades one of these others, too, just a bit. I've heard some good terms, haven't you? I'm not saying that mine's any better than any I heard. In fact, I heard a form of this one. Permission. <coughs> Yesterday, spontaneously, I thought of a better example about this than the one I've used for years. So there's a chain link fence and a gate and a chain through the gate with a padlock on it. You've got the key to the padlock. Should you crawl over the fence? Yes or no? Or use the key? So what does the key do for you? What does the key say? For you, you have access that you're authorized to be in there. You have permission to go beyond those locked gates. Are you with me or not? Permission, authorized. How about issued? And this is more in the stock sense. Talk to me about what it means for shares to be issued. What do we do? What are we doing when we issue shares? Logan? We're giving ownership to somebody No, because they did, not in hopes that, oh, well, but yeah, to acknowledge the fact that they did. Was your hand up, Asher? No. I thought it was. You didn't I stretch did have yourself? a thought. I was you had a thought. Of <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then it left. Thing Courtney? They were just distributed. Distributed. I like it. That was the theme for class on Wednesday. Over and over again, we made transactions where we gave out stock, we issued stock, as a response to them investing in our business. One way to say this would be given out. We accept their asset, we respond to them by giving them ownership. That ownership is evidenced through those shares of stock that they hold. I like that one adequately enough. I like this one, even though it's longer, if you're into memorization, you like the shorter one better. I hope you're not into memorization. Placed in the hands of the shareholders is going to help us with this one, I think. Given out. They give us an asset, we place shares of stock in their hands. If you're with me right this minute, say yes. yes. What about outstanding shares? What about outstanding shares, Jason? Held by the shareholders? Good. Are these printed on better paper? Oh, these are outstanding <coughs> shares. 
Is that what it means? No. Somebody say something different than Jason said. He was right. Logan? Not paid. I don't see that one. Outstanding shares? Joe? Would that be called retained shares? Mm, I'd rather not use that term because there's enough confusion about retained earnings right this minute to not introduce that confusion, okay? But I kind of like it. Can you piggyback on this expression? If issued shares are placed in the hands of the shareholders, what are outstanding shares, Owen? Already in the hands of others? Mm, I just want to change one word. Already, on, where on the timeline? Here? No, they didn't get there until here. So, I'm liking your expression except for the first word I'm going to say, still in the hands of the shareholders. Still in the hands of the shareholders. Now, which mathematical operation will help you find the difference? Add, subtract, multiply, or divide. If you want to know the difference, are you going to add, subtract, multiply, or divide? Subtract. subtract. So tell me the difference between issued and outstanding. If these were placed in the hands of the shareholders and these are still in the hands of the shareholders, what's the difference between issued and outstanding? I need a hand up. Logan? Outstanding. It's, it's a simpler term than that, Logan. What I'm shopping for is a real simple concept. It's two words. Asher? You... No, you're just that, that mean they were they were previously issued before the no I issued them right here <coughs> and they're still in the hands of the shareholders. Now, what's the difference between these two? <coughs> you're only seeing them the same. What would cause them to be different, David? Shares that have been returned. Their name is Treasury stock. Treasury stock. The difference between issued and outstanding is treasury stock. And I thought you would understand that, but your faces tell me you don't. So we're going to have a little talk. Put your hand up, please. I went to the state and asked permission to issue stock. And they gave me permission, and I printed up 10 shares. <coughs> Y'all with me or not? These were authorized. I had permission to do it. And I'm thinking about selling some stock. Would you like to buy a share? I'll have one asset pencil pen, which is a pen. And you may have a share of stock. You are now an owner of the corporation. Would you like to buy some stock? <laughs> then you may leave and shut the door behind you. <laughs> Never kid a kid or they're going to get the best of you. I repeat the question. Would you like to buy some stock? Yes. Thank you. So you have an iPhone to invest. You get two shares. Would you like to buy some stock? Yeah. How about a textbook? Ooh. A heavy textbook. I'm not sure I can do this. <laughs> a slick heavy textbook. That's all right. You, for your textbook, get three shares of stock. Would you like to buy some stock? You would like to invest a note-taking guide, a very valuable note-taking guide, I might add. Thank you, Did, You got no stock. Sam, I'm so sorry. You get two shares of stock. Class, how many shares are authorized? Eight. Excuse me, ten. How come I only get one answer out of this? Good question that everybody knows the answer for. How many shares are authorized? Ten. How many are issued? Eight. How many are outstanding? Eight. Interesting. That's why we're doing this. Hang on with me. What does issued mean? Shh. What does issued mean? Given out. Given out. How many did I give out? Eight. What's outstanding? Still in the hands of the shareholders. How many are in the hands of the shareholders? Eight. Eight. 
Now, what are these two? Some of you want to name these two. What are these? These are office supplies. These are paper and ink. These are in a safe place, in the safe, having never been issued. These are in the balance of common stock. Every time we debited an asset and credited common stock in class last time, in homework, all this week, that's the biggest issue of all. Issuing stock. Oh, creating equity. Stockholders equity. Are you with me or not? Those two shares that have never been issued are authorized, not issued, just paper and ink at the moment. Issued, one more time, how many? <coughs> Eight. <coughs> Outstanding, how many? <coughs> Eight. Would you like to sell your stock back? Yes. I'm afraid I'm gonna drop this, that's the reason I chose <laughs> this one first. So, you have capital returned to you and I now have, that wasn't, I wasn't trying to fool you there, trying to, okay. What are these in the safe? Office, Office supplies. What are these right over here? Treasury. This is treasury stock. Oh, the light is on. So how many are authorized? How many are issued? Eight. Eight. How many are outstanding? Six. Six. If you're with me right this minute, say yes. 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 Do you understand better now the difference between authorized issued and outstanding, especially issued and outstanding? Yes or no? Yes. The role of treasury stock? Yes or no? Yes. Okay, now just temporarily, I'm just lightening my load a bit. Those are still my assets until I buy them back. Here's two shares of treasury stock. Here's two unissued shares in two separate piles. Whose pen is this? Um, I don't know if, you, if this helps or hurts, but I want it to help. <coughs> Last time in class, when you saw me have stockholders invest in the business, we debited an asset of some sort, cash mostly, but today it was pen, iPhone, <coughs> book, note taking guide. Every time we debited an asset and credited common stock. Yes? Now, were it not for the lesson we're teaching about treasury stock, <clears throat> wouldn't it make sense when I bought those two shares back? Okay, so he invested in the business, I got his asset, he got my stock. Now, I return his capital to him and he gives me back his common stock. Wouldn't it make sense to debit common stock and credit an asset, cash, whatever, the opposite of this, wasn't that what happened was the opposite. Yes or no? Yes. If that were the case, I would want to remove it from equity and I'd probably take one of those shares or two of those shares and shred them. Never to be issued again. Is that a good idea? If we talked about treasury stock in class last time, we recounted what we talked about in, treasures, in Lecture Monday about the characteristics of treasury stock. It's stock in our corporation that we gave out, we issued. Somehow we got it back, and when we got it back, we didn't cancel it. So debiting common stock is not a good idea. We don't want to do it that way. We don't want to cancel it, shred it, because then we can never issue those shares again. And they're precious if you want to look at them that way. We only have a certain number that we can... <coughs> that we're authorized to issue someday, if we buy them back and shred them, we'll run out someday and have to go get more permission. That's why we came up with this idea of treasury stock. What kind of an account is treasury stock? Did we establish that at the end of class last time? What kind of an account is treasury stock? Asset liability, capital revenue, expense. I'm going to do that in a minute. Just give me give me the quick short version. Matthew, what is treasury stock? Contra stockholders. Contra stockholders equity is all I want you to know right this minute. We're going to get better at it in the next few minutes. Turn with me to exercise 3-7. It's on page 620. Somebody's hand was up that I ignored a few minutes ago. You answered it. Thank you. I wanted to know uh, office supplies. Okay. 
I just have a question. So if you issue the not and you receive it back, I should you stock, is it still considered an issue? It is. Yeah. If you issue the stock, it stays issued. Mm -hmm. But when you buy it back, it's still issued. Right. Because we, because of that entry over there, we didn't cancel it. If I debited common stock, it wouldn't be issued anymore. Okay. But it has been issued. I keep it in common stock. I don't debit common stock when I buy it back. That's the very distinction I'm trying to draw. Matthew? What if it's issued as like preferred stock or another one's issued as common stock? It, the, the same principles work, but we don't mix them. Okay, If it's preferred, it'll always be preferred. If it's common, it'll always be common. We're not going to buy it back as common and sell it as preferred. No, that doesn't work. What we print on there stays that characteristic. And okay, you're still fuzzy. I'd rather answer that later if I didn't get through to you. L look at 13.7 with me. On January 1st, 12, the stockholders' equity section of J Corp shows common stock five dollars per share, one point five million. Mm -hmm. Paid in capital excess of par one million. Retained earnings one point two million. I, I, may I edit? I, I like this exercise. We need to do this exercise. I like what I'm trying to accomplish in this exercise, but I don't like the way they gave it away. I wish the wording were a little different. So right now it says during the year the following treasuries. I don't want them to tell me it's treasury stock. I want you to tell me it's treasury stock. I think they spoiled the surprise. During the year, the following transactions occurred. Purchase 5,000 shares of J Corp stock. I want you to figure it out. Do you see it's J Corp? Purchase 50,000 shares of J Corp stock for shit for cash at 15 a share. That's where they ought to hint that it's treasury stock and let you figure it out. Make me an entry. Well, I have a question. I have a question, or a command. <laughs> Make me an entry. Owen? Oh, uh, debit treasury stock and credit. I just did that a second ago on the marker board. Debit, treasury stock, and credit cash, how much, Owen? Um, right. uh, Y'all want calculators? You want calculators? No. Sam does. <laughs> <coughs> Nobody ever says, nice toss. They just suck their teeth down their throat about the time I let go of it. And when it all comes out, nobody ever says, nice toss. <laughs> I said good job. No, don't patronize me. <laughs> Who wants to calculate? Who wants to calculate? <laughs> Who's doing this entry for me? Owen? How did you get 750,000, Owen? shares times 15. Owen. I thought we always kept up with treasury stock at, um, I'm sorry, cost. excuse me, cost. I mean, I erred. I, I thought we always kept up with treasury stock. <laughs> I thought we always kept up with stock at pop. The common stock first. The first time we issue it. Mm -hmm. Is this the first time we're issuing this stock? No, we're buying it back. Yes. Treasury stock. So we keep up with treasury stock how? At cost. At cost. Not par? Not par. Cost. cost. What did we pay for these shares? Uh, we paid $15 per Probably share. Probably wouldn't hurt to write in parentheses. How many shares did we buy? $50,000. 50000 at? $15. 15 a share is set. So this $5 par has nothing to do with this entry? No. No. What kind of an account is treasury stock, Owen? It is contra stock. It is. But let's get there one more time. We did this in class last time. But I thought it deserved one more repetition of this. Owen, is treasury stock an asset, liability, capital, revenue, expense? Capital. It's capital. That makes its normal balance. Um, Capital's normal balance is? Credit. Credit. Okay. What's the normal balance of treasury stock? Debit. Ooh. It's Ooh, now that's a little confusing. Ooh, how am I going to sort that out? So. You explain that by saying it's a contra. It's contra. Mm -hmm. And you already told me it was capital, so it must be contra capital. Yes? Y'all yes. with Owen and me? Mm -hmm. So what's the new name for capital? Stockholders. How many parts are there? Two. 
to. What are their names? Paid in and retained. Or paid in and retained. And which is this? Contra paid in or contra retained? Um, contra paid in. <laughs> Did we do this in class last time, class? Yes. Did I ask you this question in class yes. last time? Mm -hmm. I have one person saying yes. I need more than one person saying yes. 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 Did we do this in class last time? Yes. Yes. Let's vote. Contra paid in. <coughs> oh, yes, I remember. You were the class that voted 100% to be contra paid in. 99%. One person voted the other way. You're right. I knew that, but I didn't know if you did. Thank you. <laughs> contra paid in or contra retained class? Or neither? Or both? That's the point at which we reached the conclusion it was contra stockholders' equity, where this conversation began today. Oh, and you remembered that. And we already looked at this example in the book, didn't we, last time in class? And find that the 80000 wasn't subtracted from paid in, wasn't subtracted from retained, but was subtracted from the whole thing. Yes or no? Yes. Yes? yes. yes. Is Treasury stock contra paid in or contra retained? Everybody <coughs> said? No. I can make an argument for neither, and I can make an argument for both. Whichever you pick, I'm going to pick the other one. <laughs> but there's a good rationale. It's neither contra paid in nor contra retained. It's contra to both of them, the sum of them. It's contra stockholders' equity. Somebody had a question that I ignored. I answered it. I knew you were going to answer it. Thank you. That often happens. Have you noticed? Twice today already? <laughs> if you just let me do my thing, we'll probably cover it. Are we on July 1st? Yes. July 1st, sold 10,000 shares for cash at 17 a share. I need a volunteer fast, Matthew. Debit cash for 170,000. Credit um, treasury stock for 150,000. And paid in capital from treasury stock for 20,000. How many shares did you sell, Matthew? 10,000. 10,000 shares at $5 a share would be 50,000. Matthew, I thought we always get up with stock at par. Where's my sound effect guy? Uh. <laughs> Matthew, five dollars? No. Par? No. <laughs> I, what part of always do you not understand? This is treasury stuff. Oh. So that's different? Yes. How do we keep up with treasure stock? Cost. I didn't swing it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> How much? $150,000. How did you get $150,000? Take $10,000 times $15. Ah, if we had only written in parentheses back up here, we could look and see what we paid for it. 15 a share. We put it in that account at 15 a share. We're taking it out at 15 a share. That's what cost means. Right, Matthew? If you're with Matthew and me, say yes. 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 I thought debit credit's any. They don't. When, Matthew? You credit, paid in capital. For How much? Thousand. There's a couple of ways we could get this. How did you get it? I um, took the selling price of 17 and subtracted 15, which gave me $2. Then $2 times 10,000 gave me 20. Music to my ears. Well done. Is this revenue, Matthew? Is this revenue class? No. Uh, could, could you see why somebody would ask the question, is this revenue? Does it have a little faint hint of could be revenue? Yes. Yes. Walmart buys cans of chicken noodle soup and sells them for more. That's revenue. Yes. We've got some stock we paid 15 a share for and we sell it for 17 a share. Doesn't that smell just a little bit like revenue? Yes or no? It does. It's a valid question. Is this revenue, Matthew? No. Why not? It's coming from the stock. <laughs> it's coming from the owners. It's an investment by the owner, which is the theme for the week. Owners invested in the business. When owners invest in the business, it's not revenue. 
If you're with me right now, please say yes. yes. If you've got a question right now, it'd be a good time to ask. Owen? Um, so what happens, I mean, in a bigger corporation, they're going to buy treasury stock multiple times. What happens when the shares are all in one account, but they're purchased at different prices? Did y'all understand the question? Because I'm about to give a really good answer to a really good question, and I want you to benefit from it. Did you understand the question he asked me? Say yes or no. Please ask it again. In Treasury stock, I mean, we bought these shares for what we, what you know, we purchased these for fifteen dollars a share. What happens if we purchase the next shares for twenty dollars a share? But and the next one for twenty-two point. share, yeah. and the next one for nineteen a share. How much do you when you when you sell them back? How much do you? Do you understand the question? Say yes or no. Yes. yes. Five five. Okay. Y'all with me? That's the answer. Got a question? I do. What entry would you make on September 1st? Sold 8,000 of the treasury shares for 14 a share. Logan. Uh, okay. <coughs> debit cash for Is this a group project? You're just going to do all the entries, Owen? <laughs> and you probably got chewed out for that, too, didn't you? For 120000 He said 112000 120. You know. Oh. <laughs> Logan, how'd you get 112,000? It's uh, we're selling we're we're selling trigger stock for fourteen dollars, uh, eight thousand shares. Eight thousand shares times eight thousand shares times the fourteen. Fourteen a share so comes out to be one hundred twelve thousand. Go Logan. Uh, we need to credit treasury stock and uh, debit um, paid in. <laughs> <laughs> credit treasury stock credit treasury debit paid in credit treasury stock how much uh, that's going to be $120,000 and now we're going how'd you get $120,000 it's well we originally uh, purchased the treasury stock for fifteen dollars a share. So what we do is we take the eight thousand that were eight thousand times eight thousand times fifteen. 15 yes. And that means cost in, cost out. Right. We're accounting for these at cost. Right. So I thought debit credit said equal. They do. They don't. They will. When we need to debit paid uh, paid in capital from treasury stock. How much? For eight thousand. Now, here's what's happening, class. You'd never do this if this hadn't occurred first. We had to create this excess account in order for us to use it now. If this entry had never occurred and you sold it for less right this minute, there's another solution for that. I'm not going to tell you what it is, not important. But you wouldn't debit this account because that'd be the only entry in that account and then that would have a debit balance and it doesn't make sense for a paid in capital account to have a debit balance. That just doesn't compute. Paid in capital should have a credit balance. That's equity. Okay? So we're debiting this account until it goes away. If we continue to sell it for less, if you've got a question, ask me. Logan. So we're losing money on it. In essence. But if you're going to take that attitude, then you'd have to say that other entry that I asked Matthew about. We were gaining money, and gain sounds like revenue, and it's not revenue, and therefore it's not a loss, it's not an expense. It's just, it actually, it's increasing the amount of equity because treasury stock is a subtraction, that's contra. Sure. And now these shares are in the hands of the shareholders again. Sure. So we've increased equity, we're just not increasing it by as much as we, we're not, we didn't get our full value back. We're not, we're not because we paid something for these. Yeah. yeah. 
So it's kind of a loss, but not really. May I go on? Um, <coughs> that's the same entry. But the next instruction says, pretend it didn't happen. That's Logan's entry that we just completed. We need to sort of see that, but we sort of need to see an entry earlier that we already did. The one where we bought the treasury stock or sold it for more, that kind of stuff. B says, pretend Logan's entry didn't happen or pretend that it happened this way. <coughs> Restate the September 1st entry, assuming treasury shares were sold at 12. So if you look back at September 1st, sold 8,000 shares of, for cash at 12 a share. Somebody gonna try this for me? Joe? Uh, the treasury stock for 600,000. You buying it or selling it? So it's this entry with some modifications. This entry said we sold some treasury shares for 14. Now we're pretending we didn't do this. We're selling these shares, same number, 8,000 I think, for 12. Joel, help me out. So debit cash? Good. For 120,000. I need to know some computations for that. How much cash did you receive? Um, Twelve dollars a share. Twelve dollars a share. How many shares? 8, Let's do it. Let's do eight thousand times twelve dollars a share. Get me this number, Joel. What am I? Confusing? Eight thousand shares sold for twelve dollars a share. That's what you just told me. How much cash came in? I'm not understanding. Eight thousand shares were sold. Agreed. Am I doing it wrong? Eight thousand shares sold times twelve dollars a share. $96,000 of <coughs> cash was received. Now what? Credit treasury stock. Is correct. How much? How many shares did we sell? 8,000. 8, How do we keep up with treasury stock, Joel? Par, cost? At cost. At cost. What do we pay for these shares? We pay 15. 15 a share. Let's do 8,000 times 15, Joel. What's this number? 120,000. That's 120,000. <coughs> we put them in that account at 15 a share. We're taking them out of that account at 15 a share. That's how Treasury stock works. I thought Debit Credit said to they do. They don't. They will when you figure out some way to fill in the gap here. Now, part of this is like Logan's entry. <coughs> How did we solve this problem when we just sold it for a little bit less? We had created that excess account, remember? And that little bit of loss we took out of that excess account. Have you seen the problem here, class? Yeah. We've sold it for more than that excess account can bear. I wish that entry were up here so we could see it right this minute. And the first version of this, yesterday morning when I taught, I had it up there and I could gesture toward it. I thought it'd be better, so I switched it like this for the afternoon, and I don't like it as well. I need to be able to point to an entry that's not on the screen right this minute, one that you've seen today. If you look back at your entries, if you were a note taker, the first transaction where we sold these for, was it 17 a share? Created a paid in capital from treasury stock account with a balance of $20,000. $20, Thank you for that hearty answer. The first thing I'm going to do is get rid of that account. That's kind of like we did here, except we didn't use it all up. Now we're selling these for 12 a share. We paid 15 a share for them. We're using up all of the excess from that extra account we had earlier. And it still doesn't balance. Now what? Do you know, Jordan? Yes, sir. Um, debit retained earnings, 4,000. Where'd you learn that? The book. Was it in homework for today? Uh, I don't think so. You just read it in the book? Yeah. Good for you, Jordan. Tell me the name of this account again, Jordan. Retained earnings. Retained earnings is the topic of next week. 
But what you're <coughs> supposed to know by now is that it's part of owner's equity. It's a capital account. It's stock owner's <coughs> equity. And the point of this is there wasn't enough excess to absorb what's happened here. We sold it for a lot less. We bought it for a price, <coughs> sold it for more, then sold it for less than that. Do you remember the question you asked me a minute ago? Is this a loss? You're right. Well, kind of. It's not, but it's kind of. If you think of it as a loss, it kind of makes a little more sense. Now, is this the main lesson for today? No. Mm -hmm. It's a very minute sub-lesson. It must be in the book, because Jordan found out about it. I encourage you, if you're a little cloudy right this minute, to go in the book and find that, see the author's presentation, and see what helps you a little bit. I'd much rather you know about buying treasury stock and selling it for more, selling it for a little, little less. This is getting way out on the edge. Would you glance with me at 13.6 real quickly? 13.6 is on page 619 down at the bottom and depicts two examples of selling stock for assets other than cash. In class last time, over and over and over and over again, we sell stock for cash. Could you look up at my hand motions for a second? When we sell stock for cash, <coughs> we know the value of the stock. That's the amount of cash we received. That determines the value. That's easy. Compared to swapping stock for something other than cash, a pencil, an iPhone, a textbook, or a note-taking <coughs> guide, that's hard to know the value of them. This is more of a barter transaction. These two examples have stock exchanged for land. When we're willing to swap those two, there must be an agreement that these two things are equal. The stock must be equal to the land or we wouldn't enter into the transaction, nor would the other person. So here's the problem. These two examples say, we don't know the value of the stock, but we know the value of the land. Then that must be the value of the stock because we swapped. Or the second example says, we don't know the value of the land. We know the value of the stock. That must be the value of the land because we were willing to swap. Whichever one is easier to value is the value of both because you entered into that deal. Read the first one with me. P Corp is a closely held corporation whose stock is not publicly traded, therefore we don't know its value. On December 5th, the corporation acquired land by issuing 5,000 shares of its $20 par common. The owner's asking price of the land was $20,000, but we called him on the phone and wrote out a check for $130,000 to buy it. Is that the way life works? Somebody wants 120,000 and you say, okay, I'll, buy, I'll pay 134 <coughs> years a check. Is that the way we buy land, class? Come on, talk to me. If he's asking 120 for it, what are we gonna do? Offer him 100. Yes? You're gonna try to get it for less. You're gonna try to bargain with him. So, who cares? The owner's asking price was 120,000. Who cares? What does that have to do with this problem? The fair value of the land was 115. Now, he's asking 120. We know we're not paying that. Somehow, maybe we had it appraised. We don't know the value of our stock, but we know that the land is worth 115, and we agree. We swap. Make me an entry. Justin. Um, debit land for 115. That's the issue, right there. That's the point I've been harping on for five minutes. Did you get the point? We don't know the value of the stock, but we do know the value of the land. If we record the land at that price, then now we know the value of the stock. Go, Justin. Um, credit common stock for 100000 I Because, Justin, we always keep up with stock at Par. Yes, Justin? Yes. Always keep up with stock at par. How did you get the 100000 You um, took... I took 
If you see it before I do, talk to me. Twenty dollars. Twenty dollar par five, times five thousand shares. Five thousand shares. I thought debit credits had to. They do. They don't. They do. well, when? Credit, Canadian capital, uh, and excess of par for five thousand. It's okay. It's okay. Is that revenue, Justin? No. Is this revenue class? No. What is it? Capital. It's capital. What kind of capital? Paid in, paid in or retained? Paid in. It's paid in. Because? Careful. <clears throat> because? Because it came from owners. It came from owners. And why didn't all of you say that? Why did I have to ask twice? Because? It came from owners. owners. That's an owner investment in the business. Contrasted with two, P Corp is a publicly held corporation whose common stock is traded in the securities markets. Therefore, we know its value. On June 1st, it's acquired land by issuing 20,000 of its $10 <coughs> par common. At the time of the exchange, the land was advertised for sale for 250. So we called them on the phone and paid them 275 cash for it. True or false? False. False. The stock was selling at 12 a share. Who's going to make me this entry? I don't have all day. I wouldn't start me out. Debit land for $240,000. You determined that how? 20,000 shares times $12 per share. They were willing to accept our shares. We don't know the value of the land. We do know the value of the stock this time. They were willing to accept how many shares? 20,000 20, shares. And what is the fair market value of those shares? Uh, They're selling... $12. They're selling for $12. That must be $240,000. That's the cost of the land. You know the definition of cost. What you give up to get something. You gave up stock worth $240,000 and they gave you their land. That must be the value of the land because you swapped. Owen? Common stock credit for $200,000. Determined how? Um, Par value is twenty dollars. Say the numbers. Uh, sorry, par value was ten dollars, and there's twenty thousand. Twenty thousand shares times ten dollars a share. We always keep up with stock at par <coughs> on the original issue. Mm -hmm. Debit scripts don't equal. Uh, they do. They don't. They will. <laughs> I was trying to cut through. <coughs> Make this entry balance for me, Owen. Uh, paid in capital and excess par for um, yeah, common stock still. Um, that's 20,000 shares times a $2 difference, so it's 40,000. Is that revenue? No, it is not. Why? It is capital because it came from the owners. It came from owners. Who's with me right this minute? That's an important issue in this idea of swapping stock for assets. When it's cash, it's a whole lot easier and a whole lot more direct. When it's assets other than cash, you have some idea of how to do it.